Let's do this! Beautiful day to be a draped in the silver and black. I represent the shield. I represent the swords. And again, Randy Nation. And you come back. Why? Because it's time. It's time to bring the What's up, Raider Nation? I am the Commish, coming to you live from Hardcore Challenge Live Studios. Where's that at, might you ask? Well, let me explain. You see, it's this little place, this little place we like to call Deep Behind the Enemy Line. This is Raider Reaction. And oh, do I have a reaction for you tonight? <laughs> so I've been off for a couple nights. Obviously, happy holidays, everyone. Been off for a couple nights. And while I've been off, well, some things transpired. Some things have transpired. And we need to discuss these items. But, as we do every Monday and Wednesday, on Raider Reaction, we drop back deep in the pocket and let it fly league-wide as we touch on all the hot league topics. As well as a little more of the silver and black on our Wednesday show than we do our Monday show. So on Wednesday we like to we like to twist it up a little bit with our silver and black coast to coast edition with myself and my buddy NorCal Raider Rick, who will be joining me in a second. Because I wanted to have a minute on my own to start off this show. Since I haven't been on for a couple of days. And there's obviously been some things transpired. So first off, let me start with the most obvious thing. The death of our season on Sunday. As we were eliminated and removed from the 2017 season. Systematically beheaded. And then Monday, Monday night, Christmas, the world's watching again in prime time. We come out and piss down our leg in front of the world again. Now, I can come on here and I can tell you it's sunshine and rainbows and I can ride around here on my fucking unicorn and tell you it's all great and next year's going to be great and we're, we, everything, we got all the pieces in place and everything's... But that's not necessarily true. So let's let's take a step back first, shall we? Let's look at how we got to six and nine. Now, let's look at that six and nine first. Let's look at that six and nine first. The t just take this into equation. The San Francisco 49ers started out the season 0-9. If they win 
and we lose this week, they caught us. That's how bad we've done. So let's not sugarcoat it. Because every team in the NFL deals with a little bang up and little injuries along the course. We weren't even that beat up. So they, they said, oh, well, our offensive line, man, half our offensive line. The hell they were. Majority of our season, we had our offensive line. They just played like shit. Penn got hurt last fucking game. He was here all year. So that wasn't new. Now, I'm, I'm all for, I have no problem with y'all rally around our quarterback campaign that I've seen. Basically, because you've got two sides of the fence. Either you're trashing Derek Carr right now, or you're so pro Derek Carr, it's disgusting. One or the other. There seems to be no middle ground. But the reality in life is there is no black and white. It's all gray in the middle. It's all gray in the middle. So, when you look at something that has went as bad and as wrong as the 2017 Oakland Raiders season, you have to start at the top and work down. Reggie McKenzie and Jack Del Rio decided upon who the coordinators were going to be. They decided in one fashion or another that Musgrave was not the man and he left. Downing was promoted. He's the new OC. Unproven, young, new offensive coordinator. We kept a defensive coordinator and actually brought Pagano in and already had our replacement there because we had no faith in Ken Norton Jr. coming into the season. But we still brought him in. Again. Already having his replacement on the roster. On the staff. So there's where it started to go wrong. Management wise, bad decisions were made. Now, over the course of a season, an offensive coordinator and a quarterback need to have some sort of continuity and need to gel. That never happened. At all. Yes, I hold a lot of blame on Todd Downey for the play calling. But for those of you who want to hold our quarterback up above criticism, you are unrealistic. Because Derek Carr has regressed in season four. Regressed. I don't care about the 100 touchdowns he's thrown over four years. Statistics in the lore and annals of NFL lore really mean jack and shit. It's all about the ring. Great quarterback statistics. I'll show you Tony Romo's. He looks like a fucking Hall of Famer. No Super Bowl appearances, no rings. Dan Marino, supposedly the greatest, one of the greatest of all times. One Super Bowl appearance and a loss in his rookie season. Never made it back. There's only one statistic that matters to me if you are an NFL quarterback. It's only one statistic that matters. And it's the statistic that I think should put Jim Plunkett in the goddamn Hall of Fame. And that is the fact that the man has two Super Bowl rings. The man won on the biggest fucking stage there is for professional football. It's all about winning the goddamn game. That's what it comes down to. There have been a lot of very, very good quarterbacks in the NFL. A lot of good quarterbacks in the NFL. That when everything is set up perfect for you, 
Your line is blocking for you. Your wide receivers are catching everything you throw. The, the play calls are just clicking, man. Everything's syncing with what the defense is calling. Everything's going great. Your defense is playing well. You're getting turnovers. You're getting good field position. The, the entire season, it's just one of those seasons, man, and everything's working for you. You're winning the close games. Everything's just going your way. When it's that kind of season, a lot of quarterbacks have looked really, really good. Boomer Esiason, Finney Testaverde. There's been lots of quarterbacks who've looked really, really good when their team is good. But can you take the team that's having issues, that's not hitting on all cylinders? Can you take that team? Can you not just be a really, really good quarterback? Can you be a leader of men and help change what's going on with the team? I think next year is a very big year for our quarterback. I think next year we see who Derek Carr really is. We saw him progress through three years. And then we saw him stumble and fall this year. It's like watching your kids. It's like watching your kids, kind of. You know, they brought home an F. You're disappointed. Can't believe it. You know they're better than that. But you're still disappointed. Care for him any less? Oh, of course not. Absolutely not. And even as pissed as you are, don't let me catch somebody else talking about my kid. Oh no. Whoop that ass. It's kind of the same thing. We can talk about our quarterback. It's okay. To critique your players. It's okay. Derek Carr. Was throwing floaters. It's the last several games so many times. We are lucky defenders were dropping it. You can't throw passes like that. You can't just heave balls up. In the NFL. You just can't do that. So, yes, I put a lot of blame on our offensive coordinator. Place the blame on the defensive coordinator that we had at the beginning of the year. NorCal, you are under the page profile. I can't pull you in. I need you under your profile. But I place some blame on Derek Carr's play as well. Now, of course, his play is affected by the offensive line play. It's affected by players dropping balls. It's, I think everybody owns a little bit of a 6-9 and nine record. Everybody owns a little bit of it. And to think anybody on this team is above criticism right now is ridiculous. The Oakland Raiders are 6-9. and nine. Now, the reality of the NFL is that there is not a large difference, typically, between your 6-10 and 10 team and your 10-6 and 6 team. You are talking four games swung over an entire season in one direction or the other. That is the difference between what we consider a good team and a bad team. Four and six and ten, ten and six. It's not a huge difference. Except those are some close games that the year before you won, and then you didn't win this year. So the big question is really is we had one year where we jumped up to twelve and four. And made the playoffs. Were we really as good as our record 
were we really as good as our record? Because 2017 has to make you question that. How could it not? We won so many close games in 2016. Were we just not? Quite as good as we thought we were. It's a distinct possibility. I would like to think not. I would like to think this season was a perfect storm that spun out of control. That remains to be seen. That remains to be seen. Now let me see if we can pull NorCal in here yet. There he is. All right. See, so you got my point of view on things. Now I want to bring NorCal in as well. And uh, get his perspective on things. Because I have really been trying to keep a positive and open mind about what is going on and where we're at in our future. Oh. What's up, NorCal? Dude, I couldn't get ready reaction off my name, dude. I was like, ah. Oh, well, I was <laughs> rambling anyway. Um, <laughs> Hell yeah. So, it's over. The season's over. What's your thoughts? Oh, what's man. Your, what's your initial thoughts? All right. Honestly, dude, you're not going to like my initial thoughts, bro. Me and you are. What? Well, first... that's okay. I don't even have to like mine. It's a free All country, right. goddammit. <laughs> Goddamn. I'll tell you right now. I'm one of those people that annoy the shit out of you. I'm thinking. Oh, what you are. Oh, well, I'm a damn car either. man, bro. I almost wore the jersey just to prove my point, but, you know. Well, hey, hey he's my this quarterback. Is what don't get me wrong. He's my quarterback. But I think coming out next year, he's got a lot he's got to prove. I, I turned off my damn notifications. Sorry, guys. But, hey, I'm going to tell you right now. Straight up, we waited 14 years since Gannon for a quarterback, bro. All right? All right. And I'm telling you right now, one bad year, he took us 12-4 and four last year. We took a chance on a rookie. Ah, uh, Alright. Hold on, sorry. Alright, <laughs> God damn it. I'm going to have to turn this off and start back if it keeps going. But hey, seriously though, we took a chance on a rookie offensive coordinator and it could have went one way or it could have went the other. I know. Okay, okay. Opinion, now I'm with you. Now, NorCal, I'm not on the uh, jump off the Derek Carr bandwagon. Don't get me wrong. He's my quarterback. You know, I'm silver and black through and through, and he's my quarterback. However, you cannot look through rose-colored glasses the last two games and tell me Derek Carr is not throwing up fucking floaters on oh. his back foot, that he's tossing up balls he should not be tossing up, that he shouldn't yeah. have ran out of fucking bounds probably, and we wouldn't have won that game. You can't Honestly, tell me he has not made bad decisions. All right. He has made bad decisions, but okay. him not running out of bounds, him not running out of bounds, I do not give a fuck. I want my quarterback to go the extra mile, period. Going for the win, and I, I'm with you. Period, but. bro. Listen, if it would have won, if he would have made that touchdown and we would have won, oh, I you agree. tell me right now that Derek Carr isn't a dude that will fire up the team like that. That quick. I agree. If he gets that touch, but here's the thing: you have to know every scenario before that play. You have to know, as the quarterback in the field general, you have to know that if you're that close to the sideline and you step out, all you gotta do is hand it to. Damn! Marshall if you make that touchdown, bro. I if know. you make that touchdown, bang, bang, and, and you're one yard but away. That didn't bother me. That didn't bother me one as yard much away. as these. As these passes, the passes, yeah. like, I mean, dude, over the last several games, how many Killing. passes has he just tossed, just, yep. and just let All right. and you But I do have an answer for that. I do have an answer for that. And his answer is, my answer is, all right, he wasn't fully, honestly, he ain't healthy. And I'm not making excuses. It's the facts of the facts. All right? 
From the beginning of the season, he wasn't healthy from his leg. Then three Who vertebrae. Gave me, gave me a starting NFL quarterback is healthy in week 16. You're right. But <laughs> name, me, name me a productive quarterback that has three broken vertebrae that fucking is productive in the NFL after he gets hurt. And then I'll shut Romo the hell up. Romo, Romo retired injury. because of it. Romo like retired because of that play. same fucking injury. He did. I swear. You know he did. I, I love you, bro. Oh. I have mad respect for you, but Derek Carr's my dude, and I fight to oh, the nail for my dude. Hey, man, he's my quarterback. Don't get me wrong, but I'm a little... I, know. I, I love the debate. I love it. He's got to... He, I want to see... So, I want to see... He's got to step it back up next year. He he definitely fell off oh, yeah. this season. It's, but as I agree. It's offensive coordinator. It's bad line play. It's guys dropping balls, but... Honestly, and, and see, I hear a lot of people saying when they think it started. I'll tell you my idea on it. I think it started when Penn started bitching about a contract, bro. It caused a wave yeah. that was a ripple effect that flowed through the entire locker room that did nothing but cause trouble from the gate. And that's exactly but how I feel it about it. first black cloud that came in. I cannot I, – I agree 100%. I, all I talked about all off season was the good mojo, and then right before, oh, oh I was so pissed, man! Right before yeah, training yeah. camp, and here it was, bam, yeah, bam, pin, black cloud, and then oh no, that's when it started for me, dude. And then week it started, three, but week three Whew. broke the nail home, and yeah, it just we never we never mm -hmm. got good again, man. I have Four inside games, information on that. But it's not confirmed, so I'm not going to throw it all around and everything. But I do have some inside information on that situation. And, uh, man, I tell you right now, dude, it was bad mojo of brewing, dude. And that's what happened. It just caused a ripple effect oh, dude, and it threw us off, Sherlock bro. Holmes to figure that one out. Shit. No, I know, but, I dude, I just, I'm trying to be as, as mellow with it and not get all wound up about it because, no, honestly – that was the defining point in the in the season for me, was that moment, because you saw a, how it went after that. Yeah, regardless, regardless how you feel on either side of that particular subject, if you decide as a team you're going to do one fucking thing, you all go out there as a team and you do yeah. it all either right, wrong, left, right, doesn't fucking matter, but you do it all. As a team, no yeah. matter what it was. So that's, and I believe, 100%, that's where shit started to go south. Because well, it did. I don't care if you agree with the kneeling, not the kneeling, whatever. They didn't go out and do whatever they did as a team, unified, and it yeah. caused division. And, hey, Derek did his thing, and, and as, a, as a fucking Derek's my dude, that's where he messed up, bro. Now, I am not saying, let's get this clear. Right now, let's get this clear right now. I'm not saying our offensive line opened up and let them no, get No, no, me either. Me either. At all. That's not what I'm saying either. Not no conspiracy theory like that. But it's team is team is this thing, man. Yeah, We've talked unique. about it before. It's this fragile little baby. This thing called team. And you, yeah. you can't, you can't see it. You can't tell. But it, it is, is this delicate thing, man. Damn. And if you. If you fuck it up, it's just done. You can you. It's hard to get back and yes, to sir. get it to work. To be a team is is a crazy special thing. Yeah. And when you you start getting guys that just yeah like yeah. All right. Yeah. No, I know, <laughs> dude. I'm like because honestly, I thought Donald Penn's my dude, and then he goes out of nowhere, side busting us with a bunch of drama, and honestly. That started it in preseason, dude. I was like, wait a minute here. What the heck's happening? Remember, I was with you. We were talking about it, dude. We were like, wait a minute. Yeah. What the hell is happening right now? Like, this is not uh, what we want right now to be starting yeah, this season. It was season. just a mojo killer, man. It, yeah. just, it was just a mojo killer. That's all it was. It was just, it was a bad look. Hey. It was on national TV. We played like shit. It was just a bad look all the way around. Can so, I make yeah. one more point real quick to uh, Steven? Yes, that it all starts with the head coach. He lost the team. All right, bro. I want to. I've been waiting. 
to say this because honestly, this is exactly how I feel about it. All right. So think about this, dude. All right. Jack Del Rio and friggin' and and Ken Norton Jr. They played in Dallas, bro. And they played football for a long time together, bro. So I want you guys to know right now that that's Jack Del Rio's bro. And I understand that it's business. And I, I totally understand that. But I'm going to tell you something right now, you guys. Listen, Jack Del Rio was doing this shit. Dude, can you look at your best friend and fire his ass, like one of your good buddies, and fire his ass like that midseason? Dude, that had to be a serious dilemma for him, bro. All right, you guys, oh, I'm, I'm telling you. He's our coach. This I, I agree. Uh, that's, that, he did, that's did what he was supposed to do, and, and he got rid of – uh, Ken Norton Jr. Now, I'm telling you guys, dude, this dude right here is buddies with him. That wasn't something easy to do, all right? So I know you all don't think that he's doing everything he's supposed to and he lost the team or whatever, but I'm telling you right now, he's making moves for the team and getting rid of his buddy. That was a gigantic move to make for the team, bro. And we see everything. I, I, so I, my, my only thing is I, he, the, the defensive coordinator move, I think, should have been a move that was made in the offseason because they had already brought Pagano in. So they had already brought the guy in who was going to be the heir apparent if it didn't work out. Yeah. So if you've already had that question and that doubt in Norton, what the hell chance. did you even – you should have got rid of him before. Because but they're look buddies, what our and that's why it didn't been, happen. Man. They're buddies. That's why it didn't happen. The last five weeks. Is looking good. Sean Smith's intercepting balls. If Sean Smith can stay out of jail. Yeah, well, you know, I'm just saying, look at our defensive backs after Pagano, what, four weeks in? Dude, four Man. weeks in, our D hey, they didn't even throw to Sean Smith's side because he shut that shit down. All right? That gets me fired up because Sean Smith Sean isn't Smith a is playing well. It's unfortunate it's that we may lose Sean Smith to jail, but... Yeah, well, hey, honestly, though, yo, you, you hit my sister, and, and I might kick you when you're on the ground, too, bro. <laughs> like, I mean, I know you're a pro, but my sister's my sister. Oh, I agree. Don't get me wrong, but the, there's starting to be a little conflicting stories that are coming out that maybe it wasn't quite go down quite like that. Yeah. That's a, well, that's the scary hey, part. We're pirates, bro. Get it. All right. You mess with my <laughs> sister, you got it coming, bro. Know that shit. Well, if <laughs> right that's now. the case, absolutely. But if no, that totally. doesn't happen to be the case, it could be well, some bad news for Mr. Smith, which would suck for us. So, yeah, I know it would because, damn, I knew he was due. He was due, man. And I'm telling you, Pagano, I mean, all the way down to Eddie Vanderdose. Eddie Vanderdose is done way better. Everybody said he's regressed throughout the season. But once we got Pagano, I mean, dude, uh, uh, a lack of a little a little stop for a second, and he would have had that sack for, for a safety. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, yeah. And I don't know if any of you guys, I know the guy. So I look at his face, and I see his face when they go close up on him. Dude, he is fiending for that sack, you guys. When I met him, when I kicked him with him, he signed my flag. Uh, first thing he was talking about was, damn it, I need that sack. He just needs to break the seal. I'm telling you, he's a sack machine. He is. But, I mean, all, all again, Pagano's defense, you're seeing every week our defense is stronger and stronger. And then I saw that friggin' stat, bro, 49 with uh, Ken Norton Jr., uh, third down percentage, 49 and, and a half percent with Ken Norton Jr., and then 29.5% with Pagano. Now, stats don't lie. I mean, that's progression. Like, Yeah, I agree. Progress. I agree. Now, to ask, answer Steve's que Steven's question there, I 100% I believe Del Rio is coming back next year. I don't think they're going to make that move. I know Mark Davis is pissed off about how the season ended, 
but I don't think Del Rio is going to be the move that is made. I think they'll keep Pagano as defensive coordinator. Del Rio will stay on, and they will go find a new offensive coordinator. I think yeah. that's what everybody believes. I think that's what needs to happen. I mean, it's I, obvious. I really, really oh, like Oh, Uncle Tony, game. what's up? Thank you for watching my show, Uncle. Much appreciated. Sorry, my uncle I came on. Really interested in Bruce Arians. I like Bruce Arians. I no, like his dude. attitude. That dude would be, be perfect uh, for us. I, I don't. I think he's going to be done in Arizona. Uh, That's what I hear. I, I think he's going to be done, and I don't know if he's going to immediately get another head coaching job. I think he'll probably go to offensive coordinator, and I think he would be a perfect fit. He's he's a hard That's ass. That's what he does for Derek. Oh, he'll do good for me. He's a hard ass. I think. I think he would. Man, we've talked about it, and, and my my biggest my biggest fault I find in Derek Carr is he's too goddamn nice. That's my biggest fault yeah. I find in him. Me too. And it's, it is. It's hard to change. It's hard to give the guy that nasty. I saw story. fire in him. I've I saw fire, fire in him. him too, but I've also seen a guy that smiles after he throws a pick. And smiles yeah, and well, I think that's that frustration. Loss. That was I, frustration. I know, damn it. <laughs> Mike Tice, no way. M off. Mario, no way. We don't want Mike Tice. We want a proven, I don't want Mike aggressive Tice offensive coordinator. Period. That's what we want. Period. He can stay with the line. He, 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 yeah. I would, you want to move him up to OC? He, it, our line was shit this year. That's yeah. what he was in charge of. <laughs> yeah. So it's not like he should get promoted because uh, he did so well this no way. season. I hey, I've been agreeing with Jay because Jay was the first one that I was like uh, heard talking. No way. And I'm like, I I totally thought about it, and like I agree with that. There's no way, man. Keep him on the line. No, I mean, no, I hell think, no. I've he seen lost. what he can do with more authority. And yeah, thank you. No, he's he's a good positions coach. Let's keep him where he belongs. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> and you know what? We took enough chances this season with Downing. I don't think that we need to take any more chances. I think we need to get a proven, aggressive OC. We need an offensive coordinator that isn't afraid to pound that ball in their neck, isn't afraid to throw the long ball. Dude, where the hell was the long ball? We break it with Amari, break it for 60 yards, and then we don't go back to that shit again in the rest of the game? Dude, the only oh my thing God. we throw is these lofty – these lofty ass rainbow fucking puff balls, man. Man, he's Where hurt though. Like, he's hurt. Oh my God. I'm sorry. I hate to make excuses, dude, but ain't none of us ever had three vertebrae damage, dude. You don't know. Like that's why he's throwing off that back foot. I don't know. I dude. hope. I hope to hell. I hope to hell. But I think he's he's got a he's got a lot to prove next season because. <clears throat> In the NFL, oh, you're only as good as your last People, story. And your last, hey, his last story was 2017. And it yeah. was a sad story. Hey, <laughs> Norm Turner is, will never be a part of our organization ever again. He was garbage when he came here last time. I don't think that we'll ever pick him up. And if I remember correctly, well, I think it thing. was bad blood here's when he thing left. about Norv, man. Norv Turner is a great offensive coordinator. Norv Turner... Sucks as a head coach. Yeah. That's the oh, dude. We had bad blood when he left, if I remember correctly. Seriously, yeah, he ain't he coming, back. Not coming back. It's like Hugh. Hugh ain't coming back. Dude, we dogged Hugh when he left. Like, Hugh was our first 8-8 eight and eight season in how long? And we dogged his ass. No, nah, so, see, and then, honestly, I do not want Gruden back. I'm like, I as don't far want as I'm Gruden concerned, back. Gruden... No. No, Gruden was a fucking traitor, bro. He turned his back on us and left and Fuck freaking him. I do not yes. want Gruden back. I blame Gruden more for the fucking goddamn tuck game than I do the tuck. Go back and watch that motherfucker. For, watch the second half of that game. It's his gutless ass play calling is the reason we lost that game. It should have never got to the tuck. He's the reason. And then he left. <laughs> and then he left. And then we had that bullshit ass motherfucker. What, Bill Callahan? Is that who used the same play? That's who used the same playbook as fucking Gruden's? Ah, dude! Oh my god, I will freak out. I hate that. I hate right. that. Well, me, oh, there's a, there's a league story I want to touch on. 
just because it's 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 just the line of fuckery that has went on in the NFL this season. So James Harrison apparently had been yeah. asking for a release from the Steelers, is the report. They release him, and then he wants to act like he's pissed off that he got released, and he goes to the to his their arch nemesis, who they're you know jockeying with at the top of the AFC, the the Cheatriots, and is going to go sign with them now. And basically, yeah. I mean, what the hell? This just looks so shady, and so. Oh, it was just as shady. It was just as shady, dude. Honestly, that's any. Anything that has to do with Belichick is shady, dude. I have no faith in that dude at all or the NFL for allowing it. And, I, I, you know, man, that's that's dirty pool. It makes me mad. And, and back to him, one more thing. Jo, uh, Gruden left and he got traded, yes. But Gruden asked to go. Gruden oh, yeah. asked to go. So, it wouldn't have so happened if he wasn't on Oh, the he got traded. Check this out. He asked to get traded, man. He asked to get it traded. So that's why he's gone. And he came there. He got it done with, with freaking Dungy's team and tweaked the offense yeah. up a little bit. And then he was shit after that. that, that that's, what, that's what everybody forgets. He wasn't jack shit after that. He went there and took yeah. somebody else's team over. Basically what Bill Callahan did in Oakland. Just took somebody else's team over. And, mm-hmm. you know, he, he, wrote, he wrote it to that one season. But they are talking. I would say the heat for Gruden, the the war. I would say it's more warm from coming back to Tampa Bay, honestly, than coming back to uh, Oakland. About Giants. I heard something about the Dirt Giants. Their cutter is going to be out in Tampa Bay, and they just put John Gruden in the Ring of Honor last week on the Monday Night game in Tampa Bay. So he's got warm and fuzzies with the owners right They're now in Tampa fishing. Bay again. So there's a good possibility that they're trying to pull him in with all this, you know, we're going to put you in the ring of honor. We're going to honor you at halftime. And our coach sucks because we've only won four games this season. <clears throat> I, th- I think it's a better chance he lands there. Well, I, I don't care as long as he don't come back to us because I don't want him. I, don't, I, don't I think want Jack's our man. We just need to get an offensive coordinator that's proven. And honestly, that's going to be three-fourths of our problems and then we'll get fire, we'll catch fire, and all those little inconsistencies that are so, like, so fucking brilliant when you're losing aren't going to be as brilliant because we ain't going to be losing. And we're going to have an offensive coordinator that mixes it up, that that is trying to trick the defense instead of playing a high school ball against the defense. Because that's all Downing was doing was high school ball. Because here's the thing. We were – we weren't banged up. We were a very healthy team. No, oh, dude. The majority of the season. We had minor injuries. We had guys miss a game here or there. But we didn't have any major season ending injuries. Our team was fairly healthy. Other than defense, missing some young guys. Our well, you offense look as a whole was fairly common healthy. Common denominator. The OC? <laughs> I know. But it's a common denominator it though. Derek had the shittiest year of his career. He did. And I agree. It was making me mad as hell. I'm not going to lie. But I'm telling you right now, though, if you – there's only – he can only check down to three other plays, dude. There's not like a whole list. So if the plays that the the offensive coordinator are picking do not coincide with a long ball or whatever, he's only got three to change if he sees a defense difference. So I don't know, man. You know, you, you, you play with what you got, but I'm telling you right now, he was giving <laughs> he was getting handed some trivial <laughs> ass bullshit, bro. It wasn't what? good, man. Good. I mean, but this is Norcal, this is what happens when you're six In and NFL. fucking nine. Is everybody know. starts questioning shit? Well this no what happens. See, I don't know what's up with this season, but I'll tell you right now, dude. I've been a freaking Raiders fan since 77, bro. All right. I saw us. I went through the whole 14 years of us sucking ass. Oh, me and too. And it's like, I'm seeing these well, prima donna fucking ass game. fucking fans. Dude. Every single game I've watched. Every oh. goddamn one. Watched you every do. one. 
I'm telling you, bro. I'm watching all these prima donna ass fans that are screaming like we're way better off than we've been for the last 15 years, even oh, with yeah, the six and nine record. Anybody that and says we should drink we got, car or cut car or get rid of cars, dude, I want to slap the shit out of them, bro. That shit drives me no, crazy, that's, that's, dude. That's asinine. No, dude, to, to we have, have waited question, so long. Ask some questions about him, and, and after a season like this, yeah, that's one thing. Ask but questions, it, maybe criticize a little of the play. But to say but that did you forget man, twelve and four from last year? Did yeah, you forget no, he no, brought no, 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 twelve and four from last year? That like, would be stupid. <laughs> that would be stupid. Jesus, he is, no. Listen, Derek Carr is our future. Yo, Whether our is. future is good or bad is all our- on Derek Carr. But Derek Carr is our future. That is one hundred percent. Yep. Hey, and we waited since Gannon for Derek Carr. All through the fucking Jamarcus fumbles, the fucking all them lame asses, fucking Jason Campbell and all these. uh, Fuck, dude. I'm telling you, bro. This is our dude right now. He's got everything you want in a quarterback, the ethic. He will fucking put it all on his shoulders. The dude is our man. And anybody who can't see that, I don't know what the hell you are watching. But you ain't watching Raider Ball the way it is right now. Because right now, that's our dude, man. That is our dude. We paid him $125 million. And he took us 12-4 and four that year for earning that shit. Well, now we have gotta, one bad year and everybody's jumping shit. Up next season. Dude, I heard people say they wanted to cut every damn person in the freaking Raiders organization. I'm over it, bro. Like, dude, you got to have your teams back. Through thick and thin, or get the fuck and I'll out, say it bro. Again, there's not that much difference in the NFL between a team that's six and ten and a team that's ten and six. That's four games that swung one way or the other. That's all it is. Ten and there is not. You have the Browns and you have a couple teams like that that just absolutely fucking suck. But to be a team, I mean, look at the Jags this year. You can jump from year to year. And change your destiny year to year in the NFL. That's because there's not a big separation in being a really good team and a real bad team. It's it's you can be six and ten real easy, man. We got yep. a good possibility to get there. I hope to hell. Piss all over the Chargers season yep. on the way out the door. That's all I can hope. Yeah. But if not, I'm still screaming fucking Raiders. I still bleed silver and black, and I'll well, still be I'm, here I'm next pissed. year and all off season I'm screaming. Pissed off. I'm pissed off about this season. Yeah, oh yeah, I'm more pissed off than I've been in a long time about a season. I no, mean, totally. But am I calling to cut the whole goddamn organization? No, Hell no. 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 no we're not Hell ready for no. a rebuild. It's not ready for a rebuild. We tried to tweak some shit last season, and Se- obviously our tweaks didn't work. So we yeah, go, that, that's it. it we don't, we're not ready for a rebuild. Hey, you take a chance with a rookie offensive coordinator. You got a 50-50 chance if it works or if it doesn't work. Well, it was the latter. So you know what you do? You change it. You move forward. You don't have doubt. You don't bitch about your quarterback, about your fucking everybody, dude. You fucking make the adjustments and you move forward. And that's just how I feel about it. This is nothing compared to the 15 years of hell that we just dealt with, you guys. I, I understand being no, sick of the kid talent, and injury. Man. Dude, we are so Back close. Then, we didn't have talent. Yes. We had no talent. We have talent now. There's talent on the roster. The talent has Dude, to play together, so and the talent has to freaking produce. Yeah. That's it. Man, Gruden for coach? Hell no. No, Gruden. And- no. <laughs> no. We have hey, a coach. We need this. Our a couple DBs. A couple DBs. I think we need more depth on offensive line. I think uh I think we're set really. We're set, but we got to use our receivers the way they're supposed to be used. And that is go long, bitches. Go long. Our receivers are long ball receivers, man. Think about it. Dude, they're faster. Yes. They got moves. We're the Raiders. We're built for the vertical game. We yes. always have been. And, and to not spread the damn field and stretch it like 
dude, that's what we're known for. Throw the yep. goddamn ball. We got Cordarrelle Patterson, who's a freaking speedster. Dude, Amari. Him. Look at Amari, what Amari did, that fucking move on that fucking freaking defensive back, bro. That was so sick, dude. That fool broke out of his jock strap, out of his cleats, out of his uniform, and was laying there, and Amari's burning. Dude, Amari burned him out of his clothes. That's how bad he got burned by Amari Cooper. I'm telling you, that was awesome. No. Oh, yeah, that's... I'm fired up, dude. <laughs> I, I, I hold... I hold... There is not a person I do not hold accountable for what has happened this season. I think everybody owns some blame. You can't have a 6-9 and nine season and not put some blame on your quarterback. Yeah. You can't... No, totally. On. But I'm not saying get rid of them. Everybody holds some onus in this. And to, to say... Man, just be real about it. It just—it was a disappointing season. It's okay to be upset. It's okay to ask questions. But to say we need to fucking get rid of everybody and rebuild is just absurd. Dude, we are a couple pieces away. We took a chance on an offensive coordinator. Honestly, I was all anti-Musgrave, too. I ain't going to lie. But, boy, did I make a mistake. Because I was, too. Tell me. His, his, tell me his you playoff took game him. plan... Last year was fucking terrible. His his way of trying to help out was terrible. Yeah. When our quarterback went down. I, I, I yeah, I agree, but. Hey, hey I fucking love my funny. Raiders. No, that shit. Even, I love my Raiders and I do not give a shit. I rep it every damn day. No, that shit. And I will continue to. And, hey, my team, this is not even a bad team compared to the the last 15 years, you guys. Our team no, is a couple talent. pieces away the thing, from please. doing the damn thing. Know that. Right now in your heart, know that. Because it's that close. I'm serious. We have talent. We have talent. All right, let's 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 switch gears for a second. Let's switch gears for a second. So this is our Ghost to the Post show. Thank you for joining us. New, old, our band of pirates. Thank you for joining us on uh, Wednesday, Ghost to the Post. North Cal Raider Rick and myself. What's that? Looking at the AFC first, NorCal, who is your favorite to end up in the Super Bowl in the AFC? (sighs) Whoa. Sorry, guys, my kid's screaming. My, uh, man, I don't even (laughs) want to say it. I hate to, I hate to even say it. I mean, honestly, you know who's going to win. Uh, AFC is going to be the Pats, dude, and I hate it. But they always, Brady, you can't count them, count them out in the fucking postseason. And it sucks. I hate it. You guys, I hate saying that. Every ounce of me hates saying that. I can't. But, I don't know if I agree with you. I, the, I think the Steelers are getting banged up at the wrong time, and there's bad mojo around them right now. And I, I, I agree. I agree. Um, in the NFC, what do you think about the NFC? The NFC oh. is a question. Man. Oh, I know so who's got, got it. I'll tell you right now who's got the a- NFC. And it's the freaking Vikes, bro. The Vikes the got Vikings. it. Yes, mark my words. Hey, we are the third team to expose the Eagles on their weak-ass secondary. Mark my freaking words. When they play the Vikes, Vikes are going to open a can of whoop-ass on those sorry-ass DBs. Mark my words right now. You heard it. The Vikings. Yes, sir. That's who it is. I hate, I hate the fucking Vikings. Oh, the defense is nasty. And defense is wins it. And I'm telling you right now. I just can't. There it's them. Case Keenum. Dude, Case riding Keenum that wave to the like, falls off, to the wheels fall off. Do it. I mean, what do you else? Case Keenum. The guy's having a phenomenal year. Rage it, bro. Keep riding it. I, what about the Rams, though? You got. Gurley, yeah. I mean, Jesus Christ, the Rams are can score like a hundred different ways. Yeah, but you know what? I just don't think they have the heart in their fan base, dude. To fucking push them over the edge, bro. I don't. I, oh, I know. You, 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 fucking Vikings in their horn blowing asses, dude. My but man. you tell me though, that doesn't fucking light it up. If you, if you can't feel if you can't feel the stadium. 
you can't fill the stadium. Hey, the other team, that's one person off the team, bro. It's like somebody hurt. They can't fill it. But the no. Vikings are filling it, bro. And I'm telling you, mark my words, that D is going to take them places. I know, and it, they're due. They go to the, hey. That's where their ass is getting taken. They're going to stay right on the kitty table, right where they belong. Yeah, we'll see. Hey, honestly, I don't think – I think – that the Eagles were so exposed now weeks in a row. Oh, that, the Eagles are that, done. That, They're dead. You know what you got to do. You got to go long ball on them with a double move. A double the move Eagles long are, ball. They're nothing. Eagles are going to be done their first playoff game. First first matchup, they're done. They're, they're going to be one yeah. and done in the playoffs. They're, no way. No way. They had a tough time Is with Breeze's us. year? Breeze's year was when the hurricane went through, bro. That's the only one he's getting. Well, you know what? I've been saying for a while that, that the Saints are dangerous. And you know why the Saints are dangerous? Is because you're talking playoff football and you're talking Mark Ingram and Kamara. You got that two-headed running back monster. And if that two-headed running back monster can get going in the playoffs and you got Drew Brees behind that, that's a scary-ass team right there. I want to tell That's you something. I want to tell you something, Commission. This is why. I believe yes, I do. Still. I want to see a Super Bowl with with a home team. <laughs> like, I want to see freaking Vikings win that shit. No. If they're not going to be there, I want to see I them winning at home. Ever want to see the Vikings win a Super Bowl. Hey. Ever. Never. I hate the Vikings. With I hear it. But I tell you, though, when has that ever happened? It's not going to happen this year. Yeah. <laughs> tell me that wouldn't be an interesting little tidbit of information, though. It would be interesting, but it doesn't I know. Have... I don't know. You know, and I don't know how much that would really matter anyway. Because the thing is, Super Bowl tickets don't get any cheaper just because you live across the street. Oh, I know. But it would be, it'd be no, a cool you know. thing. Super Bowl played in your home state, and you end up in the Super Bowl. I don't know. Really? I'm not giving a shit because my Raiders ain't in it. But I want Patriots to lose. I want KC to lose. And, yeah, and it's freaking Chelsea to lose. That's it. Playoffs turn to me for a – because I can never, ever root for another team to win, but I will root for teams to lose. So it becomes all about who I don't want to win worse than I want the other team to win. That's exactly. what it comes down to. Is is I absolutely don't want this team to win. Like the Saints, I got no ill will against the Saints. The Saints, I can give a shit less about. If yeah, the no, won, I have no ill like, will. Eh, Drew Brees used that's to be my fantasy team. quarterback for days. That's only two. As long as they never get three, I'm cool with it. So yeah, yeah that's all. I'd be like, yeah. I, I, I would, it would yeah. bother me. Eagles, no. I never want to see the Eagles get a Super Bowl. Ever. KC, never want to see them get a Super Bowl. Ever. No way. Never. And I, I do. I agree with Andrew. They're one and done as well. I, I think yeah. they're not going to last in the playoffs. They're not going to last I don't... shit in the playoffs. They're done. Um, I don't want to see the Cheatriots win again. I don't, absolutely don't want to see the Steelers win again. I don't want to see the Cheatriots. But last up. Doc's ass stance, another freaking – bullet in their gut. I don't think Please anybody's God. got them. Do not let that happen. <laughs> I don't think anybody's got them, though, in the AFC, though. I really don't. I don't no. think nobody's got the beef to take them. I don't. It's sad. I hate it, dude. I hate saying that, but as a football fan, I don't think... I mean, the Falcons, I don't... The Falcons are a team, too, I, I, that I never, ever want to see win one. Oh. I will never root for Casey has one. They, they, it's 1969. <laughs> this is the only one they've ever been to. I don't ever want to see him in another one or even close. Popeye says the whiners win it all. <laughs> oh, God, I'd fall out, dude. Oh. It's, they're already out well, of this. The sad place. thing is, is they, if we lose this week and they win, they will have caught us. And that's pathetic. <laughs> we know what that means, NorCal. That music means it's a wrap. We gotta get the hell out of here. Uh, so, hey, NorCal will be back respect. with me next Wednesday.
for another edition of Silver and Black Coast to Coast. What's your prediction yeah, yeah. for Sunday? Oh, for Sunday, we're we're taking the Chargers by three. By, by three. three. All right. We'll see. We will see. I hope he's right. Cause I am. God damn. I, that. I got damn to win <laughs> to close out the season. Do we need to win? Well, thank you for joining us. If you're new, if you're old, whatever. We always appreciate any second you spend with us on Raider Reaction. Thanks to NorCal Raider Rick for joining me as he does every Wednesday. My band of pirates, thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. As always. I will be back tomorrow. I do believe I will have the captain in the studio tomorrow with me. And that should be interesting. Because I'm sure... The captain's got a lot to say. And I still got a lot to say about the, what the hell happened this year. Disappointing season. But, I never put down my shield. Never, ever, ever will I ever put down my shield. No matter what the record is. I'm out. Peace. Love. Raider Nation!